Hey guys, this is Justin from Cooking with Coit. I wanna give you a tour of my new kitchen in my garage. So to back up a little bit, so for this last year and a half, I've been really working hard to make really quality content videos for YouTube and for you guys, all these recipe videos. And you've probably seen me in a few different kitchens. So I first started in my home kitchen, which is just on the other side of this wall here. That was a year and a half ago. And I filmed there and I captured all my recipe videos for quite a long time until my family all joined up with each other and kicked me out. And the reason why they kicked me out is because when you're filming a YouTube show, uh, you've got to have sound control and you've got to have picture control. So sound control, no one can be around, no one can be talking. They can't be walking into the kitchen, grabbing food as you're filming. So they just got really annoyed of me always being in the way, hogging the whole kitchen, which I completely understand. So for a period of time, I got kicked out of there. Then I went to a friend's house they were renting their house out and they didn't have a renter at the time. So I was filming in their kitchen. That was a really beautiful spot and I was so thankful to be able to shoot there. But then my friend ended up renting the house out. So then I had to leave again. And so I came back to my home kitchen for the last six months, maybe. During that time, we were renovating our garage. And then I decided really the best use of this garage was to create a Cooking with Coit kitchen. And this would be my studio. I'd be away from my family. I'd be away from anyone that would be making noise. And they were very happy to see me uh, leave there. So this is where I am and I am so happy to be here. So I wanna go over a little bit of the process of how I created this kitchen. It was a really cool process. And it started with an incredible interior designer that is primarily focused on kitchens and even more specifically focused on Ikea kitchens. So this is a guy, his name is Rodney Formoso and he's based in Los Angeles. Came uh, in and met with me. We talked about the sort of the overall design, the look and feel of what I wanted. What I wanted was to mimic what I had in my uh, home kitchen. The black cabinetry, it would be the tile behind me. It would just sort of have that same look and feel of that kitchen. But the challenge was, is that I didn't want to build a full on kitchen in my garage. So by full on, I mean full electrical, full gas line, a built in sink. So that'd be plumbing. I didn't want to do all of that because it was going to be so expensive. So the challenge was to Rodney, how can I make a kitchen? How can I give the feel of a kitchen, but not go all the way and not spend all of that money? So he came back with this really cool design and that's what you're seeing here. And then after I was done with him, he basically handed me off an Ikea shopping list of what I needed to order and then connected me with his friend at Ikea who helped me order everything. Now that's pretty much where the process slowed down a little bit because as you guys know, supply chain issues right now. So getting all of the Ikea cabinetry, getting all of the components actually took quite a while. But after about four months, I ended up getting all of the pieces that I needed. Then I was handed off to uh, a man named Matt Larrabee who is an incredible contractor that essentially installed all of this uh, Ikea cabinetry. And that is literally his specialty. He really focuses just on Ikea kitchen cabinetry and he did such an incredible job. He's such an incredible eye for detail. I was very thankful to be able to work with him. So the first thing I wanna show you that is very unique about this kitchen that actually draws back on my experience as a professional photographer and commercial director is that this entire wall is a completely false wall. This is a set wall that's built with basically just plywood. It really has no drywall on it, nothing that a real wall would actually have but it is very sturdy and very strong. We definitely made sure of that. But essentially what this freestanding wall gives me the ability to do is that when we sell this house eventually, when I move, I can literally transport as much of this wall as possible onto a moving truck and I can transport it to the new house, hopefully in a new garage where I'll be uh, continuing to make recipe videos. Another thing that I wanna show you guys is really like the quality of the Ikea uh, kitchen cabinetry. I was actually very surprised. I really, I really wasn't sure what I was gonna be getting for my money, but let me show you these drawers. Like they're actually quite nice and they give you a lot of different height options too. So this is like the large, the medium and the smaller, but check this out. I mean, it's really nice stuff. Like it's a good smooth uh, componentry and you've got a lot of room to work with here. I haven't organized all of this yet. As you can, as you can see, I kind of just tossed it in. One thing I need to do is to get some drawer liners so it keeps everything from sliding around when you open it. Another thing I want to show you guys are these custom poles that I got. Um, well, they're not actually quite custom, but they're not the IKEA stock ones. These are from a company called MTech, and I ordered these online. And one thing that I really wanted to do was to mix a little bit of high and low. So the IKEA cabinetry was a little cheaper, so I wanted to get nicer poles. And I think there's a really important balance there to achieve where 
Some things are a little more expensive and they really elevate the whole look and feel of the place. Um, and some things are a little more cost effective where you're just getting a uh, good quality still, but you're not spending a lot. Another thing I wanna show you guys is this beautiful tile that I found. I found this tile from a company called Tile Bar. Uh, I think they're based back east on the east coast of the United States. And what I wanted uh, out of this look was a very sort of seamless look. So when you're looking at me from the front, it wouldn't feel too distracting. Like even if I've got all these props and plates and cups and different things like that, I just didn't want it to, to seem like there was a hard line going behind my head. And this way by wrapping these wooden shelves with the tile, it almost kind of goes away in this really nice way, but still gives you this really great texture and this really great depth in the frame. So when it came to countertops, I, I also echoed that idea of going high and low. So this one back here, the one that's furthest away from camera, is an $89 laminate countertop from Ikea. I can't believe how cheap this is. It's like unbelievably cheap, but it's also very durable. Like I'm super happy with this. You know, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of cooking or working on this, so I don't have to worry about really damaging it that much. Oh, soapstone. This is uh, basically mimicking the look of a black soapstone. But I didn't need anything nice back here because essentially my camera for my YouTube show is always gonna be quite far away. So there was no point in spending a lot of money on this countertop back here. I just needed it to look nice and be durable. But the place where I knew I needed to splurge was this countertop right here. Let me move this cutting board so you can see it. This is a Calcutta white marble countertop, and this was like the big ticket item. But it was so important that I made the choice to do a nicer front countertop. And the reason for that is, is that this beautiful marble really elevates the entire kitchen. It's such an important focal point to this kitchen that I knew I needed to spend a little more money than I was comfortable with. And I am so happy that I did because it came out so beautiful. It just makes everything look better. It makes everything look more expensive and more beautiful. And I just love this piece so much. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a couple of the most important appliances in the kitchen. So first we're gonna start with this refrigerator. I got this one from Best Buy. This is a higher, higher, higher? Mm. I think it's European because it's quite small, but I did need something small, so it actually works out perfectly. But what I do like about it is that it's got this uh, sort of French door look. So it's got these two doors that open up really nice and wide. Please don't judge me on what's inside. And then I've got two pull-out freezer drawers in the bottom. And at first I was wondering like, why do I have two separate freezer drawers? It seems kind of strange, but now I actually really like it because it can help me keep more organized. I kind of know what's up, up top and I know what's gonna be below. And just having a little bit more separation is a good thing. So I'm super happy with this fridge and it was actually, I think quite a good deal. And next I wanna show you this wall oven that I got. So this is a GE wall oven. It's actually a very similar model to the one that they were selling in Ikea. They were selling for like $200 less, but they didn't have any, which was a bummer. So I ended up having to pay a little bit more to Best Buy to get this one. Very basic oven. It doesn't do anything fancy. It's got like a broil function, which most do. For some reason though, this one connects to Wi-Fi. And for the life of me, I don't know why I need to connect an oven to Wi-Fi. Maybe if I was like, in the rest of my house and it could tell my phone when something was done, but like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't think Wi-Fi needs to be connected to everything, but it's a very good quality and very basic wall oven and it's pretty much everything that I needed. My most favorite uh, appliance that I have right now is this Breville Control Freak Burner. This is an induction burner. Now, what you're gonna notice in this kitchen is that I did not run a gas line, therefore there are no gas burners behind me, there's no range at all. And I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to have to bury a gas line in the garage. It was going to be way too expensive. And then I would have had to create a real ventilation system in here too, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to spend that money. So this is uh, a digital induction burner. It has this little screen here that shows you exactly what the temperature of the pan is. And let me tell you, that is such a nice thing to have. Like in my real kitchen, like on the other side of this wall, I've got a really nice Wolf gas range. And the knobs are good, but like they always slip. So I always set the heat to medium. It slips down to medium low. It's never precise. And I never get exactly the heat that I'm looking for, but this thing gives you exactly the heat that you need. So all you have to do is take an induction compatible pan and you just set it right here. There's like this little sensor. And so when it pushes the sensor down, it knows there's a pan on it. And then you can heat it to any temperature you want and it's super fast. It's got this kind of loud fan, but like that's not that big a deal. And it's really precise. And it also comes with a temperature probe. So you literally could have a temperature probe going into your piece of protein 
and it will tell you exactly what temperature inside the meat it is. It's just awesome. I'm so happy with this thing. I'm also happy with my choice to not build an induction burner into this countertop. I did think about that quite a bit, but I didn't wanna be constrained to any one spot. Like I can move this burner, over here, over there. I can create a ton more working space uh, because of that. So I'm really happy that I kept this thing portable. And speaking of burners and pans, these are the pans that I swear by. I tell you guys to buy them all the time. Anytime somebody asks me in a comment, what pans do you use? Hexclad forever. These are my favorite pans. My friend turned me onto them. I'll never buy anything else, I don't think. These do not have a harmful, toxic nonstick coating. They're actually naturally nonstick in the way that they're engineered. And they're just so fantastic. They work on this induction burner, they work on gas, they heat up really fast, so you have to get used to working with them. But other than that, I am so happy with Hexclad and I suggest you guys all get a set of these too. Another brand that I wanna show you that I'm a real big fan of is a brand called GIR and they make these really high quality uh, silicone cooking tools. So this is a spatula. They make them in different sizes. You can see this is like the large size, this is like the medium size. And they even make a really skinny one um, that's great for like scooping things out of like long uh, smoothie cups and different things like that. I also got their little mini whisk, um, which is super cool. It's got this really kind of nice uh, pattern on the, on the handle. I had a whisk that was broken when it came and called them and they replaced it really quickly with no problems at all. So they have good customer service and I really like them. So get your kitchen tools from GIR if you can. Another of my favorite cooking tools is this Thermapen. This is the MK4 digital thermometer. I love this thing so much. It is super fast, it is super accurate. And when you're cooking meat, you really wanna make sure you know what that internal temperature is so that you don't eat an undercooked piece of chicken or really piece of beef or anything. This thing is uh, my lifesaver. I use it all the time. Again, it's made by a company called Thermapen. This is the MK4. I definitely suggest you guys buy this. I will link to it in the description below. So for my blender, I'm just using the one that I had in my kitchen before. So it's one that you've guys seen. This is a Vitamix 780, super powerful, very fast. One thing that I do need to do is to figure out how do I get a replacement blade for the bottom because I've had it for so many years that I think it's kind of dulled the blade a little bit. So if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments below. But I love this blender. It's super fast and it's super powerful and it's done a great job for many, many years. So I wanna talk for a second about some of these accessories that I have uh, on the shelves behind me in case you guys are interested. Most of these, I think all of them really, are from Zara Home. And I didn't even know Zara made home stuff. My wife actually knew about it and she helped me order all this stuff because she's got much better taste than I do. But the bowls and plates that I got are really beautiful and have this really nice texture on them. They feel kind of old and antique, but they're brand new and they're actually very well made. So I'm super happy with these. And of course I have to mention my most trusted tool in my entire kitchen, and that is my air fryer. This is a Kasori 6.8 quart size uh, air fryer. And it is awesome. I mean, you guys have seen me cook with it a million times. I've done a ton of air fryer recipes. So I love this brand. Kasori makes a really good air fryer. I've also heard that Instant Pot makes a really good air fryer too, but I haven't tested it yet, but uh, I can let you guys know. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my new studio kitchen. I'm really happy with it and I'm so proud of it. And it took me a long time, but I'm so glad that I did it. But again, I am so thankful for you guys. Really, this kitchen was inspired by you, by all of your positivity, all of your support. I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you. So thank you for everything again, and I will see you in the next video.